Good morning and welcome to Fishful Thinker Television. I'm Chad Lachance and I appreciate you joining us. You know, you've caught me this morning in La Cuava del Fishful. You've caught me in the fish cave here in the shop where we work on all of our tackle. And, uh, and today's show is going to be really unique. Why aren't we on the lake today? Because we want to show you a whole bunch of different ways to go about catching walleyes in non-traditional ways. Walleyes are one of the most popular fish in the whole country. Every time we do a walleye show, we get good feedback on it. So today's show is all the non-traditional places and ways that we've gone about catching walleyes. And it's even going to include a little bit of cooking because who doesn't love some walleyes? So stay tuned, get comfortable. This ought to be fun. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, America's premier outfitter. Peterson Toyota and Toyota Trucks, moving forward. St. Croix Rod, best rods on earth. Berkeley, catch more fish. Abu Garcia, for life. Damp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. It wasn't really until I came to college that here in, in Colorado that I started fishing for walleyes consistently. And I'll be honest with you, the vast majority of what I learned, I learned by accident. When I started getting books out and, and trying to catch walleyes with traditional methods, I didn't much care for walleye fishing. They were very slow and very mundane and it didn't fit my mindset. And most importantly, they weren't effective for me when I went and put them out on the lake. What I found out is most traditional walleye techniques were developed back where walleyes are king, back in Minnesota and Wisconsin and in the Midwest where walleyes are native and they're very popular. Well, when you get here in the western United States, we're dealing with reservoir walleyes that were transplanted here. We have water levels that move up and down. We have non-traditional forage and predator relationships as well. Uh, those things make western walleyes different than walleyes in traditional areas. And what I found out is as time went on, the more I fished them with non-traditional techniques, the more consistent I got in catching them. What do I mean when I say fishing walleyes outside the box? Well. I'm talking about not your grandpa's walleye fishing. I'm not going to talk to you about bottom bouncers. I'm not going to talk to you about lindy rigs. I'm not going to talk to you about live bait of any sort. That's been rehashed to death by guys that are a lot better at it than I am. What I want to talk to you about is all the unique ways that we've caught walleyes, some of them by accident that we then went on to develop as core techniques, and some of them that were core techniques from the get-go that we just applied to walleyes. I think if you're a fan of this show, you know one of our most core techniques is working jerk baits. And it was kind of a, a change in my whole walleye fishing game when I figured out that when the sun's out, walleyes will pounce all over speedy and fast jerk baits. And that was a really a game changer for me because what happened was I went to areas when, when the walleye fishing was very slow and very methodical and guys weren't catching them without using the boat to move the lure, i.e. some sort of trolling or dragging, where I could take my very high speed erratic jerk bait and trigger those same fish with a completely different mindset altogether. Well, if you get fish that are excitable and that are triggerable, a jerkbait is better at that than almost anything out there, the erraticness of a jerkbait. One of my favorite places to fish for walleyes is Glendo Reservoir in southern Wyoming. It's a great place to catch walleyes. It's also a place that's well steeped in walleye tradition. They do a lot of walleye tournaments there. Uh, overwhelming patterns there typically revolve around trolling of some sort. Well, I'm no troller. If you watch this show much, you know I don't troll. My boat's not set up to troll. I'm not really here to address trolling for walleyes. But I can tell you this, if you get after those big same flats that people like to troll and you start working jerk baits fast and erratic, you're gonna catch a whole bunch of walleyes. Fish right there. There we go. All right. Another big one too. Nice, right on the end of this point. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if I ever mentioned it guys, but if I gotta throw a chrome jerk bait around to catch fish, that's a dang shame. You Let me just to have tell another you right one of those, now, you? I might happen to have a couple <laughs> more of them, Dan. And, and, it might and, be time to change from the uh, uh, from the crankbait. I might. That's, uh, that's a nice fish. It's another quality one. Look at them go. You weren't lying too. They're feisty. They, They're feisty. You know, anybody ones. says walleyes don't fight. It's never caught one in shallow water. There we go. Oh, there you go. <laughs> another nice one. And he's unhooked in the net too. It looks like a twin of the last one. Oh. Oh, don't lose him. <laughs> Easy buddy, <laughs> easy buddy. Now guys, uh, that's another eater, right? Yep. I'm gonna, I think yep. we're gonna keep four total between us, between Dan and I. What's the limit here? Six. We're gonna keep four total because we wanna make tacos. How, Dan, thanks for coming to Glendo man. again. <laughs> you guys need an excuse to throw a chrome jerk bait. There's one right there. Yeah. Yeah. 
Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Evan Rood, spend more time on the water. Lawrence, find, navigate, dominate. The thing about catching walleyes on jerk baits is it doesn't really seem to matter what the time of day is. You know, the classic walleye on a, on a rogue, let's say, the very classic jerk bait pattern for walleyes is typically done in low light periods in the spring of the year. Well, that's fine and it works well in that situation, but what about the whole rest of the year? That little jerk bait of whatever sort it is will continue to pay the bills for you over the rest of the year if you fish it with an open mind and you understand the triggerable nature of a walleye. He's got big teeth for a reason. He's got a very aggressive bite for a reason. He's a predator and he might be laying on the bottom half asleep, but when some jerk bait comes running over the top of him extremely fast and erratic, you're gonna awake that inner predator and nine out of 10 times he's gonna jump up and bite it. In Kansas, where walleyes tend to be in the same areas as bass a lot, it's very common for us to be catching bass in real shallow water right on the bank, and you literally pull out, oh, you know, 10 feet of water instead of two feet of water, and you can catch walleyes right there with them. Curtis Welch is a common guest here on the show and a great old friend of mine. Uh, we have done some damage in Kansas fishing jerk baits for walleyes on several different occasions, whether they be relating to a channel swing in the middle of summer on a 100 degree day or on the dam face first thing in the morning. It didn't seem to matter. The jerk baits and the walleyes go together like peanut butter and jelly. These guys don't realize that like, they'll relate to mud really good. They'll get in a real shallow mud line. It's a really good way to catch power fish for walleyes. Is you know, one of the best places to catch them when my home lake gets really, really busy is the mud lines on the eastern bank of the lake. Yeah. That are, and they're like three feet deep on a, two o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday in a little tiny bit of mud. In the middle of the summer. In the middle of summer and nobody fishes them. And nobody fishes them. And it's funny because if you go out and you fish 20 feet of water, you catch walleyes, but they're tiny. You get up to the ones in the mud lines and they're bigger. And they're up there opportunistically feeding. Yes, they are. And the key and, with mudline fish and walleyes is you got to get there when the mudlines first start. If you wait until the mudlines have been there for two hours, you won't catch nearly the numbers of fish that you will. Hmm, that's interesting. I had never thought of that. But when the mudlines first get going good, that's when you whack them. There he is right there. That's a walleye. <laughs> yep. Look at buddies with him. And come on. There we go. There we I go. like that. You say buddy's with him. Maybe yeah. I can get one to eat. You give it a little drop. pause. They give the bait a little pause and it goes dink. <laughs> That's why you know it's a walleye before you even set the hook on a lot of them because the way they bite it, it's they just thump. have a real distinct thump to them. Another average walleye, you know, for two in the afternoon. Speaking of peanut butter and jelly, this happens to be a five inch Berkeley Power Hog in peanut butter and jelly color. Why am I have this? Why do I have this in my hand on a walleye show? because I want to emphasize the fact that walleyes in a lot of cases will act like bass. If the bait fish that they look to eat are in the timber, so goes the walleyes. So it's very common for us to go to Kansas and start pitching wood cover like you would for bass and catch bass on a whole bunch of them. Curtis and I have done it on a whole bunch of shows at Fishful Tanker and it's one of my favorite ways to fish. Well, you would be amazed at how many walleyes we catch in the process of doing that, and that's typically the bait they're gonna get. They're either gonna get this or a five inch uh, Havoc tube jig or a Berkeley Pit Boss or whatever the case might be, but I'm Texas rigging that bait, pitching it on a flipping stick, and the walleyes bite it at the base of the tree more often than not. So you pitch to a tree, the bait goes to the bottom, you get a real distinct bite, and you get a hook set out of it. The walleyes will mix right in with the bass, and it's very common. He came up and hit it. You mean those bushes? Look at Voila. that. Yeah, there's you got a bass, bass with chasing him. him. <laughs> How about that? Went well, that one in a brush hog. That's, that a, that's, a, a, that's a saw guy, isn't it? Is it a saw guy? Yeah, it is it, a saw yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No white. Yeah. There you go. It's your saw guy. Walleyes, saw guys, spotted bass, largemouth bass. Everybody. You're looking for eating fish. Those are the ones. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. Peterson Toyota and Toyota Trucks, moving forward. Lawrence, find, navigate, dominate. One of the key things to it has been the fact that you can be pitching a pitch bait of some sort for bass and you'll catch the occasional walleye. But as soon as you pick up something like a square bill crankbait, like this little pit bull right here, and you start winding that through the same timber thinking, oh geez, I'll catch some bigger bass. 
What really happens in a lot of cases is the walleyes show up in numbers. The walleyes really seem to fall for the crankbait working through the trees better than the bass do in a lot of situations. So it's been several times where we've been to Kansas, we pick up the square bill crankbait, we go looking for bass, and the walleyes bite it one after the other. We end up having to put the square bill down to go back to catching bass. And I'm betting most of you see that as a pretty good problem. So we ought to be able to catch one around the outside of it here somewhere? Absolutely. Now yeah, in years past, just so the fun. camera's clear, this, this flat bank right here, normally we'd be up on there fishing, not five feet below it in the, in the bay here. So fish, well, uh, another walleye. How about that? So I have found a, this one's a little smaller than the last walleye, but. Uh, you got the walleye bait. I got the walleye bait. So, and that's no surprise that the moving bait, in my mind, that's no surprise. He's a cute little tyke. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. took the square bill out. Oh, that's a horse. Look at this walleye. That's what it is. Big old walleye, Kurt. Hey, how about that, man? Look at the size of this thing. And he swallowed my bait. Oh, geez. This ought to be interesting. It's a saga. And I, it's only been eh, easy, buddy. Easy. He almost got me right there. It's only been about 45 seconds since I said we're marking a bunch of fish at five feet or so. And uh, look at that thing. That's a beauty, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally been uh, seconds since I said we're marking a bunch of deep fish. And I bet they're all saw guys or walleyes. And there you go, guys. There's Look at that thing right there. It's very common for us to throw little soft swim baits like this right here. This is a, a little split belly minnow right there. It's on a heavy jig head. If you notice how heavy that jig head is, um, it's, that's there for a reason. It's got a big thumper tail on it. And you see this tail? Well, that tail is going to generate a whole bunch of lift when I retrieve this bait. So we put a heavy jig head on the front of it to hold the bait down evenly in the water column so that when I retrieve it, it swims nice and even. Now, this is probably the most traditional of the walleye things. If you're a student of walleye fishing, you notice in fishermen guys have talked for years about the soft swim baits for walleyes. Well, it's also very consistent for us here in the West United States. So it's one of the few techniques that I maybe learned from some guys back east in terms of, at least in their application to walleyes, and put it in play here. Look how clear the water is too, and he dumped that thing. There we go. All right, number go, one man. right there. Nicely done. Easy there, Dan. I don't think we're insured for that. Don't worry, that's only a legend extreme. Yeah, mine too. <laughs> All right, guys, and there you go. You know, it's funny, Dan. I had a long talk with, with Doug Stangy at ICAST, Doug Stangy from Min Fisherman. Well, I got him too, about why when everyone's swimming grubs, sometimes swimming that hollow belly swim bay, is it stuck in the fray yeah, It's stuck there? in the net. There we go. There it is, that's the four inch, actually that's the split belly and I've got it on a three eighths ounce jig head so it'll stay down. And that's a perfect Wyoming walleye right there. But I still think it's worth mentioning the three inch minnow style bait like this, like a little gulp minnow, this is a little power minnow. I prefer the gulp minnow in most cases, you see that right here. The little three inch minnow is non-traditional for walleyes in the fact that the places that we fish it and the way that we fish it, we're typically snapping that jig slightly up off the bottom where it's a hard snap and let it free fall back to the bottom. More like most folks would fish a jigging spoon or something like that. When it comes to catching walleyes that are in a new, neutral or negative mode, which basically means most walleyes in the middle of the daytime, snap jig in the little three inch gold minnow has paid the bills in every place we've ever fished for them. Came off the rocks right there, are you kidding me? There we go. I hung it in the rocks for just a second and uh, and I popped it out of the rocks. Oh, this one's a nice one too. Look at this one, holy smokes guys, look at this one. He looks suspiciously like the other ones. Come here buddy, come here buddy. <laughs> oh, that's, come here, come here, come here, come here. Actually, he's not even as big as the other ones. Come here, we're, we're, be, be nice. He's not even as big as the other ones, but that's a perfect size one. There's my gold minnow right there, guys. Buried in his face. Snap jigging it down deep. Yep, they're out here. Yeah, they are. That's a nice that's walleye. A walleye. Oh, Look at yeah. this thing, guys. Yeah. Let me sneak around here. You bet. That's a nice, that's nice. one. Want some help with that? Uh, I think I'd get him right here, Kurt, since we're just messing around. <laughs> I think. So we are multi-species anglers this morning for we sure. We are multi-species anglers. Now interestingly, that's my first two fish have both been walleyes out here. <laughs> Something about the gulp minnow. I don't know how that works. Yeah, gulp minnow for walleyes. I should try that sometime. 
There you go, guys. Gold minnow, I think, for walleyes is in, in for a lot of guys will replace the need for live bait altogether. The motion really gets them going in a lot of cases. We've even caught them under the slip bobber with it. Uh, there's just something about the little minnow and snapping it around that gets a bunch of fish. And, and it doesn't have to be snapped. It can be swam more along the lines of a traditional walleye jig. But in my opinion, the snap jigging will get you more bites over the long run from the standpoint that you'll trigger fish that are otherwise negative or neutral. Very similar to like the jerk bait, where the jerk bait is the jerk that gets their attention, it's the pause that gets them to bite. Most commonly, when it comes to a little jig, a straight tail jig like this, it's the snap up that gets their attention and the drop that gets them to bite. And that dropping little spiral jig is not to be taken lightly. So I'm just going to keep snapping this jig on the dam if that's all right with you guys. You don't mind, do you? Not if at we all. just If we just come along here and whack these walleyes. And yeah. I, now, I'm going to be honest with you, Kurt. We've done a couple of walleye shows as well. Yes, we have. Uh, over the years, we've done a couple of them actually. In in summertime stuff, we try to or not summer, excuse me, midday stuff is what we've always tried to show folks because that seems to be a when most people struggle with the walleyes. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, America's premier outfitter. Saint Croix Rod, best rods on earth. Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. I think the easiest way to sum up walleye fishing outside the box comes down to the motion more than the bait itself. The more erratic or the faster that we're working baits, or in some cases the larger baits we're working, uh, will get you a lot of bites. That's really what it comes down to. And I, I think that a lot of people think of walleyes as timid feeders, and that's absolutely the case in, in some situations. But if you give them something fast enough or erratic enough, you can get them to bite in a lot of cases. Uh, the square bill crankbait in the trees comes down to winding it at speed. The jerk bait comes down to how erratic can it be. And the jig comes down to snap jigging it. But in any case, if you consider the things that we talked about with, the, with walleye fishing outside the box right here, especially if you're fishing through the middle of the day or places you don't know much about or during conditions weather-wise that shouldn't be good for walleyes, I think you'll find you'll catch a lot of fish. So we appreciate you guys watching very much. We've had a great time with today's show, but now let's take it upstairs and talk to you about how to prepare some of the walleyes that you're gonna catch with these newfound techniques. So we're gonna go upstairs and we're gonna look at some walleyes on the camp ship. I wanna show you one of my favorite ways to cook walleye fillets. What we're gonna do is Parmesan crusted walleyes right here in a cast iron skillet. And I'm gonna make a little side dish right here with the, on this griddle that you can see getting hot with uh, some asparagus and also some potatoes. So what's in the pan right now is a little bit of flour, a little bit of cornstarch, and some panko breadcrumbs, salt, and pepper. So what we're gonna add to this now is a whole bunch of fresh grated Parmesan cheese, and then also some fresh parsley, flat leaf parsley that I chopped up. Now I'll be honest with you, these walleyes were in my freezer. Had they not in my, been in my freezer, I would probably do something a little less flavorful than this, but walleyes, once they've been frozen, don't have maybe as quite a fresh flavor as they could otherwise have. So this is an excellent dish that'll still make the fish taste delicious. First of all, I'm gonna take the boneless walleye fillets that I thawed out and I'm gonna roll them around, shake off any excess in flour and cornstarch that's lightly seasoned. Then I'll go straight in here into my egg mix. It's just basically eggs with a tiny little bit of water um, and a tiny little bit of milk in it. And then we'll come over here and go straight into our, into our uh, panko and Parmesan mix. And we want a pretty healthy coat of this stuff on here. Shake any excess off set it over here on the plate, and that'll be ready for the skillet. Basically, I took one big giant russet potato, and I sliced it, as you can see, in nice, relatively even thickness slices across the board here. And then I blanched them in boiling water for about four minutes or so, give or take. Rinsed them in cold water. So I'm gonna go in with a little bit of olive oil first thing. I've got a mixture of salt, onion powder, garlic powder, black pepper, and a little bit of smoked paprika. We're gonna give it a pretty good coating of this. Of course, we'll do the other side because we want them to be nice seasoned, so we'll flip them over to the same thing on the other side. And so asparagus, same kind of thing. I'm just gonna give it a little tiny drizzle of olive oil right there. And we'll toss those around, and we'll use some of the same seasoning mix that I, that I already made right here. It's again, which is the onion powder, garlic powder, salt, pepper, and a tiny little bit of paprika. Okay guys, so this cast iron, as you can see, is getting hot real quick on there. And, uh, and basically what I just added was uh, what amounts to 50-50 mix of olive oil and butter on there. We're gonna step over here to the griddle, and we'll make sure that it's got a little bit of oil on it. These potatoes are well oiled, so they shouldn't, it shouldn't need much. And we'll put all these guys down on there. And we're gonna go ahead and put it on here. In with the fish. In we go. One of the great things about the, the uh, 
Pro 90 stove. It's got this windscreen that goes around and keeps the wind off the burners. The burners themselves are set low in the grill. Works real good as far as being able to cook in the wind. This thing's ideal for being able to take tailgating or anything like that. Uh, really good system that Camp Chef makes here. It, the whole thing is available to get a bag and it'll all fold up and collapse and go into a bag and you can take it with you to the game or camping or whatever you might want to do. Okay, and you can see that's getting nice and hot on there and that cheese is going to melt. That fish is going to cook really, really quickly, guys. As with any other fish, you don't want to overcook it. I believe this fish is going to get real close here. So let's go ahead and get one of these and flip him over and see how he looks underneath there. Oh, buddy, how's that looking, guys? That's looking pretty good. You see, it's still bright green. We don't want to cook all the color out of it, but it's starting to get a little color on the edges of it. As soon as these get some color on the other side, we'll go ahead and pull them. Okay, I'll put a piece of that. We'll put a few of these right here. And we'll get these out of the way. We'll pick two of these up and lay them in here as well. We're not going to get too fancy with our plating. We're just going to do something like that. And guys, that's what I'm talking about right there. Parmesan crusted walleyes, griddle asparagus, and griddle potatoes. So, so, so simple, guys. So walleyes outside the box. Hopefully you enjoyed the show today. We had a great time making the show and all the crazy ways that we go about catching walleyes. So we appreciate you joining us. You can join the conversation on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. And most importantly, we hope you'll tune in, and we'll see you next week. Time now for today's best catch, brought to you by Berkeley. I hung it in the rocks for just a second, and, uh, and I popped it out of the rocks. Oh, this one's a nice one, too. Look at this one. Holy smokes, guys, look at this one. He looks suspiciously like the other ones. Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. <laughs> Oh, that's, come here, come here, come here, come here. Actually, he's not even as big as the other ones. Come here, we're, we're, be, be nice. He's not even as big as the other ones, but that's a perfect size one. There's my gold minnow right there, guys. Very in his face. Berkeley, catch more fish. Fishing with them, I just start fishing with walleyes, and now I put my arms around walleyes and fish with them whenever I can. Oh, sorry, Chad. Sorry about that. I lifted up. That, just, was, that was the two of us that time. I think there's one right there. No, it's not either. It's soft though, whatever it is. <laughs> cut for a second. All right, cut for a second. Time to cut. Okay, cut for a sec. Okay, cut for a minute.